So we've talked now about the anatomy and function of the male and female reproductive structures. Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, the process of fertilization, development of the embryo, and eventually childbirth. So we already talked about meiosis, which is the type of cell division that takes cells that have pairs of chromosomes, diploid cells, and then from those cells produces cells that are haploid, cells that have half the number of chromosomes, gametes, sex cells, sperm and egg cells, if we're talking about animals. And so um, we know that a sperm cell has haploid, has in humans 23 chromosomes. The egg cell is haploid. It also has 23 chromosomes. When they combine during the process we call fertilization, they form a cell that's called the zygote. Um, and so the process of the male and female gametes, the sperm and egg cell combining is called fertilization. And the cell that they produce is called a zygote. A zygote is diploid. It has the full set of chromosomes, half of them which came from the sperm cell, half which came from the egg cell. And this zygote cell is what can go on and develop into an embryo and a fetus and a new organism. So once the zygote has been formed, as we see here is the zygote, it starts to grow in size and in number of cells. And that process is called cleavage, the, the splitting of the cell. And what happens is the zygote goes through the process of mitosis and one cell is divides and forms two cells. And those two cells go through mitosis again and they form four cells and eight and 16. And so we have this rapid growth in the number of cells in this embryo. Now, at first, all of those cells are identical. They're what we call undifferentiated cells. They're sort of generic stem cells. They don't have specific functions. As this ball of cells grows, it becomes um, a solid ball of cells called a marula at first. Then it starts to become hollow. So we see here. And it's called a blastula at that point. And again, these cells are still all undifferentiated. They're all exactly the same. They're generic cells. The next step is called gastrulation, which um, uh, an indentation starts to form inside this hollow ball of cells, as you can see here. This indentation is eventually going to become the digestive tract of the organism. And it is at this point, okay, um, when it's in this phase, that the cells start to take on a different role from each other. The term we use for that is they start to differentiate. And what that means is cells that are on the outside of this, um, of this embryo start to become specialized. It's called the ectoderm. Cells on the inside start to become specialized, start to take on different roles. And we'll look at that in, a, in another slide. And then these cells, certain genes are being turned on or off depending on where the cell is located. The cells are what we call differentiation, differentiating. Now let's just compare a little bit about how um, reproduction happens in different types of animals. Um, so. When we're thinking about reproduction, we can think about where does the egg get fertilized? And then we can also think about then where does this fertilized egg grow into an embryo and an organism? So in some organisms, mostly aquatic organisms, um, fertilization doesn't take place inside of the organism. It actually takes place in the water. This is called external fertilization. Um, and most fish and amphibians reproduce in this way. Uh, for example, fish go through this process called spawning when the female just releases eggs into the water at a specified time and males just release sperm into the water and the sperm cells then find the eggs and fertilize them in this process of spawning. Uh, same thing with amphibians. Um, they have external fertilization. The sperm cells meet the egg cell outside in the water. Typically, the, the 
eggs of these organisms. They don't have a shell or anything. They're in the water. They don't need a waterproof protective shell. They need to allow the sperm to enter the eggs and fertilize them. Um, and sometimes they're covered. This is sort of, these are um, frog eggs. They're in a jelly-like mass that keeps them sort of in one place for easier fertilization. And often these, um, these organisms reproduce uh, with this external fertilization, produce large numbers of eggs because many of them may not be fertilized, may not survive. They may be eaten. They have to produce many um, many eggs in order to ensure the survival of the species. Fish can produce tens of thousands of eggs at one time during one spawning. Amphibians can produce hundreds of eggs at one time. And once the eggs are fertilized, the zygotes grow into embryos actually inside of the water. And so um, they have external fertilization, but also external development. And they eventually hatch after a relatively short time of maturation and are then individual um, independent organisms. Other animals, especially terrestrial land animals, have had to develop different adaptations to allow them to reproduce on land. Um, so terrestrial animals uh, over time evolved to have what we call internal fertilization. In internal fertilization, males deposit sperm cells in the female body. Those sperm cells then fertilize the egg inside of the female body. Um, and so it's internal fertilization. Um, and this is because um, they can't just lay eggs externally and have them be fertilized because they would dry out very quickly. Um, so insects, reptiles, birds, um, Mammals all have internal fertilization. And then depending on the animal, reptiles, birds, even a couple examples of mammals will then have external development. So even though the egg was fertilized internally, a shell then forms around the embryo and then uh, the female uh, releases that egg and then the development of the embryo happens outside of the body. They have external development inside of an egg. You can see you know, bird eggs like this chick and turtle eggs and, and insect eggs here. An egg basically contains within it a small little watery environment that can provide for that embryo to grow and develop. There's a yolk inside of that egg that provides the energy. Oxygen can diffuse into the embryo. Waste products can diffuse out of the embryo. And so it has all of the things necessary to support this um, growing embryo. Here's some images. These show um, some actual microscope images of a developing embryo. We can see the single stage here. This is the zygote that's just uh, about to, to divide by mitosis. And we have the two cell stage and the four cell stage and eight cells and so forth. We can see the marula. We can see gastrulation starting to happen as this indent starts to form, which will be the digestive tract. So we can see all of the stages. We can also see here um, the different colors in this very early embryo represent the different layers of cells and what they will become. So the outermost layer of cells after differentiation begins will become skin cells and neurons that are in the outside of the nervous system, neurons that are in the brain. The middle, this red section, will become cells of the spinal cord and muscles, kidneys, red blood cells. And then the innermost layer will become cells of the lungs and the thyroid and the pancreas and other organs. Sorry about that. So we start thinking about mammals. Mammals are the only uh, group of animals, for the most part, that have internal embryonic development where the embryo grows internally inside of the female body until birth. There are some examples of um, things like marsupials or monotremes that are slightly different. Marsupials have internal fertilization, 
And then the embryo grows to just a very immature stage internally, and then is born premature, crawls into a pouch where it nurses to develop to um, obtain energy and finishes its development in the pouch of the mother. So this is slightly different than other mammals. Examples of uh, marsupials are koalas, and kangaroo, opossum is one that we, an opossum is one that's here in North America. There are some egg-laying mammals, monotremes are called. Um, they, um, there's only a couple examples of these. They give birth um, by laying an egg, which hatches, and then the young feeds uh, on milk from the mother to finish its development. But we're concerned mostly with placental mammals. Placental mammals, such as humans, um, have internal fertilization. So the sperm cell meets the egg cell inside of the female body. And then the young develops internally as well. And that happens in the uterus. Placental mammals have very small eggs compared to the other organisms. Um, they are fertilized by a sperm cell. And then they will implant into the wall of the uterus. And in the wall of the uterus, there will be an organ that forms called the placenta. The placenta has tissue from the mother um, and tissue from the fetus together. And in the placenta, the blood vessels, capillaries from the fetus run right next to capillaries from the mother. The blood from the mother doesn't actually go into the fetus or vice versa, but they're right next to each other. So that material can diffuse back and forth. Oxygen from the mother's blood can diffuse into the blood of the fetus, and that's how the fetus gets oxygen. Nutrients from the mother's blood diffuse into the fetus's blood, and that's how it gets nutrition. That's how it gets energy. Waste products that are in the fetus's blood diffuse into the mother's blood, where she can then eliminate them through her excretory system. So the placenta allows for the exchange of materials both ways, from mother to fetus and fetus to mother. The umbilical cord connects the fetus's blood supply to the placenta. It has two arteries that carry the fetus, blood of the fetus to the placenta and one vein that carries the blood back to the fetus. Here's some examples, some pictures of these are monotremes, spiny echidna, the platypus, and you can see how small the eggs that um, they lay. These are the primitive egg-laying mammals. These are the marsupials, the koala, and the kangaroo. These are possums. You might see them around here. Often you see them as roadkill. Uh, I'll skip that video for now. And this is placental mammals. Um, so what you see here, this is what a placenta actually looks like. It's a, a, an organ, it's filled with blood vessels. Um, and then this is the umbilical cord that would be attached to the fetus. And here you can see it, the, the umbilical cord, um, what it really looks like. Here in this diagram, we can see the placenta and you can see the um, blood vessels, which are carrying blood from the fetus out to the placenta and blood from the placenta back to the fetus. Again, this exchange of materials happens in the placenta between the mother and the fetus. This is why the developing uh, fetus never needs to eat while it's developing because it's getting nutrition from blood in the placenta. It never needs to breathe because it's getting oxygen through the placenta. It never needs to exhale because carbon dioxide is being removed through the blood in the placenta. So the placenta provides those things that are necessary for the um, for the for the young to develop. Sorry, I did that again. And uh, here we have another diagram where we can see sort of a little bit more detail. What we see is this is the wall of the uterus. Okay, we can see that this um, embryo implanted here in the wall of the uterus. And wherever that happens, the placenta begins to form. We can see the blood vessels uh, from the embryo developing have grown into the wall of the uterus. We have blood vessels from the mother also growing in, in nearby to these. And so that's where this exchange takes place. In the early stages of development, the um, embryo actually has a small yolk sac. Human embryos have this. It provides for the initial energy needed for the embryo to grow and develop until it starts to implant 
and starts receiving its energy and nutrients from the placenta. There's also this layer called the amniotic sac that surrounds the embryo that forms. It's filled with fluid and it helps protect and sort of cushion the, um, the embryo as it's growing and as it's developing. Uh, to finish up in humans now, we'll focus on humans. Um, the uniting of the sperm and egg cell that happens in the oviduct. So if we think back, once each reproductive cycle, a woman will release an egg cell from an ovary. The process is called ovulation. And after ovulation, that egg starts drifting down the fallopian tube or the oviduct. This is the time when that egg can be fertilized by a sperm cell. So a woman can only become pregnant around the time of ovulation. And um, if she has sex during that time, around the time of ovulation, sperm cells can make their way from the vagina, through the cervix, through the uterus, into the oviduct. The sperm cells are actually attracted to the egg cell. It gives off chemicals so that the sperm cells know where to go to find the egg cell. And if one of those sperm cells enters the outer layer of the egg as it's traveling through the oviduct, then it will become fertilized. And that's when the process of cleavage and mitosis will begin. The mitosis will continue as that fertilized egg is, is traveling down the oviduct towards the uterus. It's dividing by mitosis. It's forming an embryo. Okay. Eventually it makes its way into the uterus where it will implant, if we, you think back to the reproductive cycle of the woman, the lining of the uterus that's being enlarged, it's thickening, blood vessels are forming, it's getting ready for this to happen. The reproductive cycle gets the uterus ready to support a growing embryo. Um, and uh, if that embryo is present, if the egg was fertilized, it will attach to the wall of the uterus, a placenta will start to form, the umbilical cord will then form, and around that embryo, an amniotic sac will form that's filled with fluid to help protect the embryo. 